Um, hi, this is uh, the first uh, uh, recording of uh, our new iBook Binding podcast, and uh, our first guest is uh, Ben Elbel, uh, French and Dutch uh, bookbinder, uh, whom I met uh, first time some five years ago, and uh, who was the, the person who sort of made me to, to start recording a podcast. So uh, it's, it's really logical to start this uh, series with him. <laughs> so, uh, Ben, uh, yeah, yeah. I want to make it uh, a thing uh, because uh, uh, there are difficulties for uh, people of different languages and cultures uh, pronouncing names of, uh, of different people. And uh, I know it because uh, uh, many people uh, pronounce my name in, in so, so many different ways. So I wanted to ask you to, to tell how, how your surname is pronounced, how it's properly pronounced. And... Uh, it's uh, in French, it's Elbel. And uh, in, uh, in English, it'd be uh, El Elbel. Yeah. OK. OK, and, and you're fine with both, both versions. Yeah, I'm fine with both versions. You can say uh, elbow. The Dutch tend to say elbow. Okay. Uh, I, I really, I really don't mind. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's, all, it's all good. Okay. How, how about how about you? How about your name actually? You, is it is it Stefan or is it Stepan? Uh, yeah, it's it's Stepan. The Russian version is Stepan. But uh, as I was uh, first for first couple of years of my life, I spent in Romania, so I was Stefan there. And oh, really? uh, yeah, and there are so many other variations of the name, and I'm, I'm uh, fine with that, with almost everything. At least everything I, I know to date. And uh, I guess my favorite is uh, is the hun Hungarian version, which is Istvan. <laughs> Istvan. Okay. Yeah. Well, that yeah. Really there is there is uh, Saint Istvan uh, uh, Cathedral in 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 the middle of uh, Budapest. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> and that, that's that's your favorite. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll call you. I'll call you Istvan for this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we met we met in 2015 right after i uh bought ibook binding and uh, uh i was i was glad to meet you and your uh girlfriend at the moment uh, uh because you were the first uh book binding and bookish people uh whom i met uh through iBook binding uh, in the world, because uh, before I met only Russian book binders and people uh, with whom I uh, studied and from whom I studied at the American Academy of Book Binding, and you were my first step into the large world of book binding, I guess. <laughs> so when you uh, when you yeah when you acquired iBook binding, then you you set out to 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 to, to meet to meet lots of book binders first to to create to create a network. Yeah. And was that was that the idea? Yeah, yeah. I I wanted to. Yeah, I, I always want to, to make interviews. That's my idea that oh, interviews are, are interesting because I want to introduce many different peoples with many different techniques and point of views. But my, my own problem is that I'm always too slow to decipher interviews, to, to make audios into texts. And uh, I have something like uh, three or four interviews uh, on my hard drive that were never put into text form and uh, uh, they're still waiting, really including, nice. including yours, your, your and Kike. <laughs> so. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't remember. When, when did you, uh, when did you do it? Is it in a, in, in a studio? Yeah, or yeah. We, we went for lunch as well. So, so. Yeah, it was, it was when we were still in the, in the studio and we sat near the table and you showed some of your projects and... Uh, really? Uh, you showed you showed you know this book uh, that uh, I think you made a, a box for a book that was a little bit skewed. So you made a, a skewed box or, or 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 book cover was skewed something like that. That was some some interesting yeah, project. Yeah. So you had to, yeah, to yeah. Make, make it a bit skewed. So yeah, and showed some other things. And uh, I really wanted to to make this interview, but yeah, it's just how it works for me. <laughs> well, he, he, here we are. Here we yeah, are. Yeah. <laughs> So what about what about your path to book binding? Because uh, it's it's very different for for every person, and uh, uh, I guess there is a lot of inspiration in in, in every in every book binder's path to the, the craft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I guess so. Lots of people come from from all sorts of different paths. For me, it was uh, from art school. Uh, I studied arts, and um, I was drawing a lot. I was uh, in, in illustration, and so I needed to draw all the time and. Uh, and I took a I took a class, uh, a sort of crash course on bookbinding, uh, to learn how to make my own notebooks. And uh, so in doing that, 
and I uh, noticed that I, I really quite liked it. And to the point that I noticed at some point that I was more interested in making the book, making the binding, than uh, than filling it with uh, illustration. You mean you mean uh, so, like uh, making the design of the binding, or just uh, just uh, oh, no, putting book, leather on cover? Very very plain, very simple, just notebook and notebooks uh, with with sewn sections and hardcover. That's it. And uh, but I really I really enjoyed it. There's something there's something I really loved about it. And uh, and I was making more notebooks than I could uh, could ever could ever use. <laughs> Yeah, that, that <laughs> happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those were those were interesting times. Uh, I think I think you got a question uh, later on from uh, one of your uh, listeners that uh, how how to do how to do book binding on a on a on an incredibly uh, low budget. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I, I'll be very happy to answer that uh, because because I started really that way with making making books in my in my bedroom and there yeah. was dust. Uh, everywhere and, and bits of cardboard uh, in, in, in the bed sheets sometimes that I found, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can I can relate, and and that's that's really how it is for for most of bookbinders because uh, not not many uh, artisans have this uh, I don't know privilege to have a lot of tools and a lot of uh, money to start off uh, with with the I don't know fully fully organized workshop and uh, everything. So yeah, it's just like like it usually goes. Yeah, yeah, uh, and it teaches you teaches you a lot of stuff. I think to do to do it to do it with, with very limited resources. No, it teaches teaches you to be resourceful. So, uh, but what what happened after that um, is that um, I uh, I, so I graduated from art school and uh, for a while I tried to publish my my my, my work, uh, my illustrations, my comics. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I didn't know you made comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show you another time if you want. Okay. <laughs> uh, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't really work out. And um, at some point, uh, my father actually actually suggested that that I continue with bookbinding, and uh, because I, I, he was seeing that I was passionate about it, and uh, and he said, why don't you why don't you pick that as a career? And and I thought I thought it was such a strange idea because because what, what what do you mean? Career bookbinding that that's not that's not career you know it's, it's a it's a, it's a hobby, it's and a I, hobby. I, I didn't know I had no idea at the time that there were some people um, making making their livings from 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 bookbinding. Uh, but but I had to I had to be trained. Uh, I had I mean to tell you the truth I'd already done some because I was so passionate that at, uh, during those uh, those those art school years so passionate about bookbinding that I did I did everything I could to to, to learn. To learn it, so I, I read. I read all the books I could read, and, and I, I, I knocked on the doors of, of every bookbinder uh, and conservator in the in the Strasbourg area, which is uh, which is where, I'm, where where I was studying, uh, to ask for an internship, and then of course everybody turned me down um, uh, until one person didn't, and that was uh, Bernard Santoni from the uh, the, uh, the archives uh, in the in, in Strasbourg. Uh, who said uh, I, I don't know I must have he must have liked me uh, so he said yeah sure why don't you why don't you come up come once uh, once one day per week and I'll, I'll teach you some some book binding and uh, that was that was an amazing opportunity and uh, so I did I did have a little, that, a little that's, bit that's of, a great one when you find some sort of a guide and into the craft and uh, uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of a guardian angel he took me under his wing and he had, he had no no reason to, to do it, I think it just made him feel good uh, to, to 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 teach somebody, you know, to transmit his his, his knowledge. Um, so I did have a I did have a little little bit of knowledge and a form, formal bookbinding knowledge, but but definitely not enough to to to, to be to be useful in, in to get a job in a bindery, which which is what I wanted to do. Uh, so uh, I went to I went to study in a school which happened to be not too far from uh, from Strasbourg. It's uh, it's uh, Ascona in Switzerland. Uh, we've we've passed really we've passed there uh, with Sophie a couple of years ago when we were traveling through Switzerland, and we passed passed there. But uh, as right. as our travels are often quite hectic, and we decide where where we go. Uh, only the day before, uh, I didn't even bother to to write to to school uh, to check if we can visit and then uh, look around. Uh, but yeah, I hope to visit oh, someday. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you should, you should, you should definitely go. It's it's it's, it's a beautiful place on the on the lake, uh, the Lago Maggiore. Oh, yeah. uh, it's 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 just it's just absolutely stunning. 
Yeah. Um, but and the, and the school, the school itself is is fabulous. It's uh, at the time I, I think it was the best was the best school, probably the best school in the world. I would I, I would say uh, cer- certainly in, in Europe. Uh, I don't know about the United States, but or other places, but certainly in, in Europe, that's the best the best thing I could do. Um, also because because it's uh, it's a school for uh, for professionals mostly. So it's people going there for for for. For a week or two weeks maximum uh, to learn uh, one specific area that they that they haven't that they need to perfect. Uh, so basically, I was I was from week week from week to week after week surrounded by different people, uh, all professionals coming from from different parts of the world, um, and um, and uh, and I was for a very long time the the, the, the most uh, the idiot, the most stupid in the room. <laughs> which, is, uh, which is a good place to be, and then, right? Because it's, 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 it's step up your game. Sometimes it's really useful because you can learn so much if if you are open to to the new stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean uh, there were there were there were yeah all these professional binders coming from from Germany and Switzerland who had who had three or four years apprenticeship uh, under un, under their their belt, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's like, well, I'm. Huh, I'm an art student. Uh, <laughs> I found this book. <laughs> you know, that's 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 about. I, I didn't I didn't have much to bring bring to the table in those days. Um, but but I did that, and I. Uh, well, the good thing about about Ascona too is that there's not so much to do in the in the in, in the weekends, um, and because uh, it's 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 a beautiful place, but it's uh, it's it's quite. It's I guess quiet, on, only know, to know, hike and swim. A young person. But yeah, yeah, you can you can swim in the lake and you can uh, you can go hike in the mountains for sure if you're into that. Uh, but but me, I just did bookbinding. So I did bookbinding all week with my teacher and, and the the other students, and then in the weekend did did more bookbinding on my uh, on on a little table with a cutting mat and a and a, and a, and a scalpel and, and that's it. So it was really really intense. And as it, no, as you no, describe no. it, I re- I really had a re- very similar experience when I was uh, uh, in uh, American Academy of Bookbinding, and it, it's located in in the middle of nowhere in in the mountains and yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, in the valley, and uh, you don't really have many things to do there uh, about about uh, besides hiking and and uh, bookbinding. So many of uh, my fellow students and and I as well were working on Saturdays and sometimes on Sundays uh, and uh, yeah that's how it goes and and it's it's beautiful in a way because you went there to study and uh, and it's well, fun you, well you completely completely immersed completely immersed into 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 one one thing so uh, yeah no, that that year was amazing and I, I did I did so I did bookbinding uh, with Edwin Heim at the time uh, but also also conservation with Henrik uh, Rurig at the time, I didn't know which, uh, which 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 one of, of them I was going to choose. Uh, so I did I did a bit of both, and um, and, and and also there were um, there were some guest uh, student uh, teachers, excuse me, coming from from all over the place. Uh, there was that I had uh, Heidi Kyle. Uh, I did Heidi Kyle's workshop. I did uh, um, a bunch bunch of other bunch of other people. It was uh, Cor Arsens, uh, which is uh, which is also Dutch. Um, yeah. So I did that, and um, uh, about about halfway through uh, the year, I started uh, wondering about what I was going to do after, right? Yeah. So, uh, so uh, that, that's an important I question. I, 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 pardon? That's an important, important question. question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. And so what I did is I is I start is I started asking uh, all the, the students who were professionals uh, uh, if if they had uh, if they had a job for me. And uh, most people said no, and until one person did say yes. So uh, that was Claudia Flade from uh, from Göttingen, Germany, and she said, "Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah." And I have a, I have that's, a by the way, an important <laughs> important lesson because uh, you 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 shouldn't be afraid to ask people uh, about apprenticeships and uh, and all these sorts of things because sometimes uh, some will, some 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 at some moment some person will will answer you hey, yes, and you will find. Uh, uh, you even closer uh, to your, your to your dream job and uh, your your I don't know <laughs> the thing you want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for, no, for sure. I mean, it's uh, it's 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 not it's it's not easy to find jobs and find apprentices and, and internships, but it's it's possible. It's possible. You just have to come. You have to be at the right time, in the right place. Yeah. And uh, the way to do that is to uh, is to is to just go for it. So. 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, Claudia Flade, uh, Göttingen, Germany. So that's where I spent. That's what I did afterwards, and I spent two years there. Uh, and that was a lovely little little boundary with uh, only. I was the only uh, formal employee. There were uh, two other apprentices, but I was the only only guy who was actually on on payroll. Um, yeah. uh, so so I was doing I was doing we're doing everything. It was one of these small binaries that does that does a bit of everything. You know, so there was conservation uh, repairs. Uh, there were uh, uh, there were menu jobs. There were uh, binding one of binding jobs, small small edition jobs. Uh, I learned to yeah I learned I learned I feel like I learned so much. I mean I, I learned uh, in Ascona in uh, in a formal education. Of course I, I I learned how to how to work precisely and how to how to be how to how to have an eye for every single detail. But in in, in the practice you learn how to how you learn speed. You learn speed, and so one, one yeah. of the things that that, that, that what I was I was uh, that was really a shock for me is uh, when when I, I I got I got something to do with uh, with leather, and um, I'd been taught to uh, uh, previously to use to use paste for leather, yeah. or or maybe paste with with a little bit of PVA, you know. Uh, and and so I, I said to my boss, uh, yeah, can I can I go cook some paste? And she said. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> Paste? <Yeah. laughs> no, 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 no. We're, we're using we're using PVA for that. I was a bit shocked, a bit horrified, but um, I, 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 it, it works. It, it works out. Uh, there, are, there are there are many purists who 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 would say no, you should never use PVA, and uh, but most of them are, are are making sort of one of things, or I don't know some uh, design bindings which are in in uh, which exist in one copy and uh, for for projects like that it's 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 feasible but when you're making like 100 books <laughs> an edition of course yeah, yeah. of course the speed of yeah, yeah, is is more important than uh, yeah pva is a good thing okay, well, i th i think i think what matters is the results you yeah. know it, it doesn't it doesn't doesn't really matter how you do one thing is is it's really it's really the result that matters and so so if you can if you can achieve the same result in a, in a in a fraction, in, in in half the time with one method, then then then, then the other methods it will, you you should you should definitely pick the pick the, the the quick method because if if the results is 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 good right yeah, um, yeah. that's very important yeah uh, and, and and definition of good but, but here is is quite it's uh, definition of good definition of good changes from from uh, uh, project to project so yeah that's that's exactly this the the truth. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. But but yeah, e economy of movement and speed is is, is an unbelievably important uh, skill to have when you're running a commercial bindery. Yeah. So 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 I learned that there, and uh, after that I um, I went to so yeah, this job ended, and um, and I started looking around for, for for other other jobs, and I ended up in London, uh, working for um, uh, Shepherd's Bookbinders. Uh, By the way, I, I I really love this European way of uh, you know growing up and then studying and moving around because it's like already it's France, uh, Switzerland, Germany, uh, England, uh, so it's four countries already in in just a few years yeah. and that that's pretty amazing because uh, back in back in Russia it's usually either you were born in in Moscow or Saint Petersburg and then you you build your career from uh, there and you stay there. I, or you've been born in some uh, smaller city and you try to move to Moscow or St. Petersburg and then you build your career there. And there are just not so many people who are like moving around from, from city to city uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and from especially from country to country. But in Europe, it's, yeah. it's, it's often a bit different. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I, I, was, I really wanted to... Yeah, I was a free. I was a free man, you know. I was married or anything, no, shit, no kids. Or so I was. I really wanted to to uh, to travel, uh, but also I was inspired by um, by 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 the German students uh, that I saw in Ascona, because in Germany they have this program which I can't remember the name of, but uh, basically after after an apprentice uh, finishes his apprenticeship. They can go on a on a on a journey. On a journey. Yeah, it's called a journeyman or something. Yeah, and they they, 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 they wear these 
funny clothes and yeah. and, <laughs> and they they don't they don't have showers for weeks <laughs> yeah that, that walk, that's a great tradition and uh, and uh, yeah i i've seen s several uh, articles about this tradition and it's it's beautiful not not the thing about showers but <laughs> no of course not. that was a joke but but they, they yeah they go from from city to city and and knock on uh, binders doors and 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 i think i think the the the, the host has an obligation to take them in. It's uh, they, they can't you, you can't turn them down, uh, even if they they smell really bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, th I thought that was that was such a great way to, to, to gather a lot of experience, and I thought I'm going to do that, but I'm not not going to do it national, I'm going to do it international. Yeah. That, that's interesting yeah. how uh, medieval guild traditions uh, survive in, in, in modern uh, society in, in 21st century because it's definitely something that comes from, from old ages. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. So, yeah, so London, I worked for, uh, for Shepherd's Bookbinders for three years and, uh, and then for uh, Bookworks uh, for maybe a year or something, I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but I, work, I worked only part-time for, uh, for Bookworks because uh, that's, that's, that's the moment where I started uh, building my, uh, my, own, my own business. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and I, I, I met, I met um, Kike uh, yeah. at some point in, uh, in London, uh, and uh, no, I met, I met her somewhere else, but I, I will spare you the details of uh, my relationship uh, with Kike. Uh, we just I just met her and uh, and she lived with me for three years in London and uh, she was homesick after a while and uh, we moved we moved back to Holland so I've been here now in the Netherlands for five years yeah. and I have uh, yeah we're working together uh, Kike and I yeah. uh, uh, for uh, I always happy to see both of you on on uh, book oh, concerts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 in in November in Leiden. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, which uh, which you are now uh, a major a major attraction. <laughs> not, not sure about major, but yeah, at least I'm part of it. I hope to be there yeah. this year. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's my uh, that's basically my uh, my backgrounds. That's what that's what got me here. Yeah, and now you take apprentices. Uh, I, I I do I do from time to time. I uh, it, it's like I said earlier. It's, it really depends on uh, you have to be at the right place at the right time. And, and there's 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 been moments with with me where where I was open for that. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and other moments where where not at all. So. Uh, yeah, at the moment, I'm not. I'm not really looking. For yeah, not not that I'm uh, saying that you are always taking apprentices. I mean that uh, from time to time you do that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I do. It depends. Really, yeah, it depends on what frame of mind I'm in and, and what, what 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 project I'm, I'm I'm doing. And yeah, I have I have um um I have one uh, freelancer uh, currently, uh, Mariska, who comes comes in once or twice. Uh, a week, and then I have a I have an intern, so that's why I'm not I'm not looking for any. But I'm saying I I won't I don't think I will be looking for one uh, after that. This it's uh, Roderick is going to be here till the summer. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's here two days a week, and uh, yeah, either he'll be he'll be working for me on a, on a freelance basis, or or uh, I'll look for other freelancers. Uh, that's that's where I'm at the moment. But but again, this this for me it changes all the time. So yeah. I might I might change my mind in six months. Hey, actually, it would be cool to have somebody have an intern, and so we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, thanks a lot for the story. I, I'm I'm sure it it should be inspiring for many people because uh, it's it's good to know that you can start with you you had a, you had a great chance with your education, but uh, in the first place you started with no tools and no knowledge of bookbinding, and it was absolutely new for you. So everyone can can do that. And uh, by the way, I started without any any proper education. I, I I've been making books for I don't know seven years i guess uh, before i first went to to study to a school and uh, so i've been mm -hmm. i've been a self-taught person from the beginning and uh, uh, you can you can learn a lot of uh, things from from books and from uh, uh, from youtube so yeah yeah if you want to, yeah, to yeah. start uh, making books just just do it <laughs> 
yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. And uh, the, the other thing that, that, that's also true is once, once, once you have a formal education, you can, you can figure out new things uh, yourself. Yeah, I do. I do that. All, I do that all the time. All the time. I mean, there's 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 very little that I actually, yeah. Even 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 with even with regular stuff like there's there, I, I feel that there's very little that that I do the way I was taught uh, years ago. I, I everything everything I do now is is a result of 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 a choice. I have I have tried. I have compared what I've been taught. To practices in the trade and, and practices in another trade, from having having traveled from in, in different countries to have given me a, uh, an insight into to the fact that people work very differently from from place from place to place, and there's there's really many different ways to uh, to skin a cat, if you uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. The, the expression. Yeah, and, uh, and and I truly believe that the only thing that matters is the results, uh, the quality of the results, and and how fast you get there. Um, and and if you have and if you if you if you if you if if you have this this mindset, if you un understand the basics, uh, you can you can figure out pretty much everything. So I would encourage anyone to to go out and to, to, to go and take a take a, a French binding uh, workshop, yeah. uh, because because that basically has encompasses the whole thing. If if you can if you can if you can do a French binding, uh, you can you can do everything. I, I think because, because there's there's, there's basically all, all elements are, are, are covered, you know. That's true. How to bound, how to back, how to sew, how to how to cut boards, how to sand, how to bevel, how to how to uh, how to treat the edges. Uh, all, yeah. all of these things are contained in that one structure, and uh, and you can you can use these skills to then to then build on. You you will definitely learn much more than you need to know uh, uh, when you need, when you want to make a case binding. But then uh, this. Uh, this additional knowledge will help you to to move different directions because different styles have uh, different quirks and different you know little small things that that uh, differentiate from from style to style and uh, I absolutely agree with you on on that French binding uh, allows you to to give the a wider scope in in book binding. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that I, I, I would I would encourage I would encourage that setting something that is that is mm -hmm. that is very fine, very. Uh, yeah, very, 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 very high standard, uh, and also, also getting some experience. I know, I know it's hard and it's not easy to easy to to find, but some experience in a commercial environment, because it, it that will teach you that will teach you speed, and it's a, it's a very different different way of thinking. So the, you, the way the way you approach uh, an edition of uh, fifty books is yeah. is very different from the way you approach one copy. And uh, and that's 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 very powerful to to understand these, these principles. There are certain principles that you can you can then you can apply everywhere. That's true, and yeah, and I also agree. I also agree on that because I had a very short stint in in the binder in Moscow, uh, right. uh, something like for a month, and uh, uh, this was an, an important experience. I I cannot say that I liked it. I liked it a lot. I I cannot say I like the style of the operations. Uh, I mean I mean. It's not wrong style. It just was wasn't something uh, I want to to be uh, involved with, because I I, uh, I I I cannot I hate routines. So I need to switch switch operations all the time. And uh, yeah, that's just me. But this was an, an important experience, and uh, it really shows you how the different styles of uh, operation are working for bookbinders, and uh, that's really important to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. What what were they specialized in? What were they doing? They were doing uh, some quite expensive fine bindings, and uh, they were oh. re rebinding, rebinding uh, editions. Uh, so yeah, it it was it was a quite expensive bindery. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next next uh, part of our uh, today's uh, podcast is uh, is uh, shop tour. Ben agreed to to give you all. So yeah, that's very generous because Ben has has a beautiful studio. Well, well, I'll let you be the judge of that. Uh, let's 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 do it. Okay. Um, so first of all, um, by the way, uh, the room where where we started. This is my finishing room. And uh, what's 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 all are all these sheets of paper on on the walls? 
Yeah, I, I did this over between Christmas and New Year's Eve, um, uh, by t- tidying up, uh, going through my drawers, and I, I noticed that I had, I had a lot of beautiful uh, paper that is, um, yeah, that I, I keep forgetting about, you know, because it's at the bottom of a of a drawer. So, so instead, I, I, I put them on the wall. I think it looks it looks quite nice, and uh, and I'm reminded that I have this stuff. Otherwise, it's saying I never get to it. Okay, that's a good reminder. <laughs> so this is yeah. So finishing room, um, it's uh, it's 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 really nice to have a dedicated room for that because uh, I think the finishing is the most important part, at least uh, for commercial bookbinding. So it's nice to be able to um, lock myself in there. And, uh, and 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 focus uh, 100% on what I'm doing without any any other distractions. Um, so I'm panning. I'm getting back now till I till I hit the window. <laughs> this is uh, this is my uh, the river view I have from the from the studio, which is quite quite stunning. Yeah, uh, you have an amazing view. I, I remember how I walked to your uh, studio one day, and uh, the bridge was closed, so I had to walk like twice more. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, British, yeah. Uh, um, so this is the the top floor of uh, of my bindery, and uh, it's a big space uh, that we use as um, showroom, uh, also lunch room actually, and uh, place to uh, to greet the customers. Um, it seems a little odd to have so much room, uh, but I really <laughs> like it because it's uh, it's 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 nice to have a lot of room to for, to start with. But uh, it's also it's also a place where I can invite people uh, for a presentation, for example. I've done that uh, several times last year, uh, so that's that's really nice to be able to do that. See, I have a I have a screen uh, over there that I can uh, I can pull. And show some uh, show some slides. Um, I also have this is this is a photo uh, corner, so when I do my photos, um, it's permanently there. Uh, it's on a, it's on a, it's on a baby bed. In baby way. bed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a good setup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's uh, it's another thing that that's really great to have to have this photo uh, corner always ready to go because it takes takes a, a enormous amount of uh, time to, uh, to, to to set it up and I photograph absolutely everything that that leaves the studio yeah. so uh, that's nice to have I had um, I had my photo corner in in our uh, second bedroom uh, before uh, this uh, lockdown started uh, but then we had to uh, make space for Sofia's uh, uh, studio so now I don't have a photo corner <laughs> <laughs> and Sofia oh, has a studio. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Now you know what you're missing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then I have, I have, uh, like I said, it's a showroom, so I have, uh, I have rules dedicated to different projects. This, this, this one is showing what we do with bookbinding out of the box. You can see on top, you can see the five tutorials that we, uh, that we already have, and uh, and the lower uh, half circle is the, um, the, the the bindings that are. That are made using these tutorials. Um, then here I have a wall showing the menus that we do for restaurants. Mm-hmm. Then uh, here is how much the, how uh, much fun is it uh, making menus? F- fun? Yeah. Oh, I, I think it's I think it's very fun. I think it's uh, I think it's I think it's super fun. Uh, it's uh, it's 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 work that takes relatively little. Amount of time comparatively, right? Per per item, because yeah. um, because it's always it's always uh, at least thirty copies or that this this kind yeah. of amount. And not uh, not much yeah, sewing. Yeah. There's great. There's no sewing involved now, and there's uh, I I I think it's it's very pleasurable to to be able to produce thirty things in in relatively short time yeah. and have them have them out the way really really quite quickly and that, that's I, I enjoy I enjoy doing it and they're they're often so so different so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. They, all, they all they always have their own their own personality their own their own color codes etc uh, this is what I call the bibliophile corner um, so mostly it's uh, boxes uh, and uh, slip cases and things like that uh, to uh, to protect and enhance uh, uh, valuable books. 
basically that's what that's what this uh, cabinet is devoted to uh, and then I have another uh, display cabinet here uh, but it's empty because I've taken this stuff out to show you later yeah so let's let's go down I hope I'm not am I am I not am I I hope I'm not shaking the camera too much no it's perfect is it okay yeah All right so yeah we're going uh, down to uh, to the actual bindery uh, where the and that's 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 the moment when everybody gets uh, so so much envy uh, uh, of your of your workshop because you not only have a lot of space uh, on your top floor you have <laughs> almost as much space on your <laughs> ground floor. Uh, yeah, well, it's uh, this is my uh, fifth studio, I believe, maybe even more. Um, <laughs> so it's it's not like I got there. Uh, Overnight, you know, uh, I've been. So it's it's like a studio per year. If you if you are five five years in, in the Netherlands and it's a fifth studio. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm counting from the from the beginning. So from from my first studio in London. Oh, okay. I was working working at Shepherd's at Bookworks. That was in my in my in my in my apartment in a the top floor of a Victorian house, okay. uh, where, uh, which was uh, completely shaking uh, every time I was <laughs> I was doing <laughs> I was using the board chopper. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so this is this is the uh, the bindery. Um, uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll go in the middle and uh, and do a three sixty degree. So okay, here we go. So again, there's there's a lot of there's there's big windows, there's a lot of natural light coming in, and there's a, there's a beautiful view which uh, calms my nerves when uh, whenever things go wrong. <laughs> yeah, this helps a lot. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to show you the beast in the middle. The beast in the middle, yeah. <laughs> so this is a splitting machine, and uh, yeah, I'm going to turn it turn it on. It's going to make a lot of noise. I hope you'll still be able to hear what I say. Yeah. Okay. So let me make a demo. So here, there's a piece of leather. Uh, you can measure it here. Measure the thickness. It's now just under one millimeter, okay? Yeah. And then I put it, put it through the machine. And I'll just split it to uh, half a millimeter, so 0 0.5 millimeters. Yeah. Uh, and the suede, the suede part. So it, it, it literally, it's a knife that literally uh, cuts the entire piece. Yeah. It can be a larger piece, by the way. It can be up to thirty-seven centimeters. Yeah. Uh, it cuts it. It cuts it through, in, 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 through, through the thickness, and you end up with two parts. One is the, uh, the, the, the hair side that you're actually going to use uh, to cover books, boxes, and whatever. And uh, the other side is the suede uh, that goes the, comes up the back of the machine. So, uh, so you you get both sides of, of the of the of the leather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You end up you end up with both. You end up with two parts. It just doesn't just shave away. It really cuts it in two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. And the the, the other side, the suede side, is is by the way uh, uh, useful for certain things. And, yeah. Um, I've just I've just published a. Uh, a tutorial, a free tutorial uh, that I sent to my uh, newsletter recipients um, about showing a method uh, that explains what to do with the uh, with, with the suede, how you can transform. I call it upcycling, leather upcycling. Technique. Okay. So, yeah. So if you if you if you're interested in that, um, if if you're on our, our mailing list, you should have re received it. If not, just uh, send me an email. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you again. <laughs> okay. That that's um, great of you. And so much, so much time saved with this uh, splitting machine because, uh, uh, yeah, I guess uh, many bookbinders can can relate how how much time can be spent on on pairing leather and uh, and yeah, uh, what, what we used to making it thinner. Send it, send it somewhere else to have it to have it paired. Yeah. But uh, it takes it takes a long time to 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 arrive there, and then it has to be split, and uh, uh, they might not do it immediately, and then it has to come back. Uh, so all in all, it, it, can, it can take a week or a week and a half uh, before anything is, is split. Now I can do it all in-house. 
And uh, by the way, we're also uh, providing a splitting service to uh, to other binders, and uh, we're running. It's it's kind of the end of it now, but we're running a free uh, splitting um, service to the end of this month because uh, we want to encourage people who are in a lockdown. Yeah, I've I've seen I've seen the announcement on Instagram on your Instagram, and I guess that's 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 a good cue for people to follow you on Instagram because uh, you make some some pretty important announcement there. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So I thought it be, could be a good time for people to try leather binding, uh, and if, if if they're at if they're at home, uh, they can send us the leather uh, and we split for free or any pay shipping. But like I said, it's the, only until the end of this month. So I'm not sure it's going to be very useful information. <laughs> um, here's a here's a stack of uh, finished work. I don't know if if it's if you can see very well. Yeah, but, uh, these are, you can see something. Are, yeah. These are boxes, and uh, they will be shipped shipped out on Monday. Um, right. Uh, what else could be interesting for you? Uh, this is the corner where I have my most of my materials. Um, here you got uh, you have papers, uh, the plant chest with papers. This is a, a, a plant chest that I, I made myself to uh, to store my colored paper. So each uh, each each level. Uh, has contains only one color, which is which is nice. So yeah. you just open it like that, and there's the full <coughs> sheets and the uppercuts on top. Um, this saves a lot of time. By the way, if, if you can show the top part, because uh, uh, I think you use PVC tubes or something for for sorting. Yeah, am I am I right? Oh yeah, no, uh, uh, it's cardboard actually. PVC would be better, would be yeah. stronger, but because. Uh, is a Tubes. Yeah. I, I've seen uh, uh, one uh, a friend of mine. Uh, she's she's making different things with glass glass, and she has yeah. this large shelf of PVC tubes of different sizes in which she puts inside these uh, sticks of glass that uh, uh, the jewelries are uh, glass jewelries are made with. So uh, yeah, it's it's really a great way to store different all the different sorts sorts of things from from glass to to leather maybe and paper and uh, and uh, book cloth. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know about glass. So she must be using a smaller, smaller diameters then. Yeah. Smaller yeah. pieces. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a, it's an idea. Some some people put their finishing tools in uh, in, in in things like that as well. Yeah. Uh, it's it's an it's a, it's a, it's an ideal solution, and it's uh, it's very cost effective. It's, meaning yeah. it's cheap. Yeah, so. especially as as often you can find this uh, PVC tube given away or uh, sold for for cheap when there are off cuts because you don't really need long ones uh, uh, for for most of the things. So yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So I have another. I have another one. Uh, another another bunch of tubes uh, up there with uh, mostly cloth, a little bit of paper. Then I, I put I put this this strange rack uh, which I built custom built on top of my guillotine. <laughs> okay. it's an original solution. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it works it works for me and there's just enough room here to uh, to go to squeeze in. Uh, yeah, to squeeze in and use the uh, <laughs> use the guillotine. Uh, that's a uh, that's a new rack that we did not too long ago to store the uh, board offcuts. Offcuts. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, because they do tend to clog up your uh, um, your 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 storage. Um, and by the way, here's here's the uh, here's here's my uh, board uh, storage. So it's extremely simple. It's something I I saw I saw at Shepherd's uh, actually. Uh, they were storing their boards uh, vertically, uh, and it's counterintuitive, but it's 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 a very very good idea because it's it's extremely easy to access. You you just have to just have to do that. You just have to browse. Yeah. Like that, and you can pull them up. So you have to have yeah. enough room to pull up. But it works very, very well. And board is 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 thick enough to be self-supportive. So this is this is a again a very cost-effective solution that works really well. It's on wheels as well, so I can I can I can take it out to access the back of the uh, of the guillotine. Yeah. I think I think I, I've been always storing uh, my cardboard vertically because I never had enough uh, uh, flat space uh, to to store it horizontally. Uh, but I'm usually usually shoving it behind some uh, pieces of furniture or something. So if I have different sizes, different thicknesses of cardboard, I, I put uh, two millimeters besides uh, besides sofa, uh, 1.5 millimeters beside besides the uh, the shelves or something like that. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, if you have it all stacked in a, on, on, on one stack it's it's yeah it's, it's, it's a mess it's hard. yeah the stuff is, is heavy it's yeah. really heavy yeah 
So yeah, that's a that's a good that's a good solution. Uh, but I want to show you um, I want to show you my boards because uh, boards are you know it's the stuff that you don't see in the end. Yeah, but it's most, most important. Except when it's uh, when it's exposed. But yeah, but it is it is it is one of the most important things. And I have I, I have uh, I just counted earlier I have 25 different types uh, <laughs> cheap here, not huge amounts. I have uh, between two and ten uh, sheets of each of each type, and uh, and and I pick I pick the the right board according to uh, to, to, to to the project. So yeah. whether 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 it's uh, the, the, uh, there's lots of things are coming to coming to play to do with the the, the 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 hardness of the of the board. Um, uh, its weight, uh, whether it's smooth or a little bit rough, yeah. uh, all these all these things are, uh, are are to take into into consideration. Depending on the so, projects you're working with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so well, basically, I've got uh, I've got I've got it starts here with gray boards, that's the soft uh, soft stuff, and I have it um, between uh, zero point five and uh, four millimeters here. Yeah. Uh, then this orange stuff, that's, that's, that's my best kind of board. It's, it's, it's a, it's called press pan. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very, very, very dense and very hard kind of board. Um, it's, it's also, uh, it's also much, much more expensive. So I use it for the, 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 the best stuff. Usually the leather work is, 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 is done with this. Um, it's, it's harder. I think it's harder than wood, but it's, it has, it has flexibility of, um, of, of, of cardboard, it's really, really wonderful. Yeah, as, 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 as we discussed earlier, uh, uh, we used uh, green board while I, I was studying at the American Academy of Bookbinding, and uh, it also was recommended yeah. to me by, by many different bookbinders. And, yeah, I think uh, which one you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I will need to, to look up the link because it's, it's, it's a board that is made in, in UK, and uh, there, was, there even was something like a cri green board crisis several years ago when uh, uh, previous suppliers stopped supplying the board from, from the UK and everybody in the, in the United States uh, tried to stock up the leftovers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not surprised. I, would, I, I think I would, do, I would do that too. Yeah, yeah. When you, when you, when you have a good board, you... Uh... Because I've tried so many balls over, over, over the years, and yeah, uh, yeah if if if, the, if these guys from uh, the press pan told me they were they were going to stop, I, I think I'd buy pallets pallets of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. It changes so much. Good materials change so much in in your work process and the end result. So yeah, it's it's really important. Yeah, 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 for sure. So uh, yeah, well, I have some black <laughs> uh, some blackboard as well that are used for uh, not not too often, but usually when when the board is going to be exposed, uh, then then it's nice to have it black. I find it's supposed to break, and uh, here, and then finally I have a third uh, a third uh, quality which is which is in between it's it's in between the, the orange stuff press pan and and the, uh, and the gray board so I use it for uh, in between yeah and, uh, kind of work and then I have that's not that's not all because I also have I also have uh, acrylic sheets and uh, an MDF which I, I I store somewhere else so I can't, I'll show you okay yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, what else, what else could be, uh, interesting to you, to your you guys? working uh, surface? Maybe, maybe, I, want, maybe yeah. I want to brag about my, uh, my benches a little bit. I showed uh, your bench uh, before, I don't know, a oh, year yeah. ago or something on, on our Instagram and, uh, yeah. uh, uh, yeah, everybody was pretty inspired by, by it because, uh, it's, yeah. it's a nice, uh, you know, engineering design and, uh, nice idea because uh, I, I think you told me that it's, it's, uh, you can disassemble it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I designed it myself uh, to, with uh, keeping in mind that I have a tendency to move studios. <laughs> uh, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so I can, yeah, I can break them down into manageable sizes because they, they take a huge amount, huge amount of space. And I have, I have three of them. I, I just ordered a, uh, a fourth one. Actually, it's going to come next week. Uh, but yeah, what, what's what's a good bench is really important. I mean, there's nothing more annoying than than a than, than a table that that shakes when you when you work on it. Um, I, I, it has to it has to be stable. So 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 it has to be heavy. Uh, it can be can be made of wood, but I, I, I chose I chose to to make them in uh, in uh, in steel. So it's four centimeter uh, wide um, steel steel bars, and uh, then what 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 I found in important. Well, first of all, is the height. Uh, they're 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 uh, they're one meter high, 
because I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm rather tall, but I think even if you're not tall, it's, 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 it's better to have it high because you don't, you don't have to um, hunch over your work, and that could be that could be really bad on your back. Uh, yeah. After after uh, repeated uh, long long hours. Oh, that's true. When when I had my own uh, uh, studio back in Moscow, I had uh, two types of uh, workbenches. One was uh, uh, two workbenches were one meter high, and two workbenches were seventy five centimeter high. Because I also uh, had students there, and everybody is diff of different height. That was the first reason. So some uh, uh, people uh, would be more comfortable on a seventy-five centimeter bench. But the other thing is that for some projects, it's better to work on on higher bench, and for other projects, it's it's better to work on lower bench. So I used okay. both both of the types, and uh, yeah, it 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 works for me. <laughs> At least it works for me. <laughs> Yeah, what, what kind of what kind of projects do you find were better on a lower lower bench? I did some I did some woodworking at the, at the, in the same studio. So some some of the woodworking projects uh, uh, I definitely used more uh, the lower benches, and for more bookbinding projects I used higher benches. So uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's how it <laughs> it was split for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, what 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 I what I found what I find important uh, with a bench is to have uh, is to have uh, compartments. Um, uh, not not drawers. I used to have drawers. I, I don't think drawers are, are, are useful. Uh, what I yes. what I have now is is this this lower this, this lower level here. Yeah. Just immediately under about yeah. seven centimeters under the under the under the the top. Yeah. Uh, where I store uh, I store a cutting mat because I never cut I, I've got boards on my benches but I don't I don't cut on the board I cut on the cutting mat yeah and whenever I need to cut I want to have this at hand uh, instantaneously and and also I've got uh, I've got I've got my waste paper in three sizes one two three uh, always always at hand always yeah. at hand and then I can store my uh, I can store well underneath. Uh, I can have this. This nice because it fits. It fits. Uh, it fits an IKEA kind of cupboard. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. I did. I did. I didn't plan for that. It, it just happened. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it happens. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I fixed uh, I fixed the vacuum cleaner into my uh, workbench because uh, uh, yeah because I I do some woodworking from time to time. It's 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 always a lot of dust. So I, I need to uh, clean it and uh, to do it with vacuum cleaner is much easier. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. The stuff that you're gonna need all the time. It's it's really set up for uh for uh, for efficiency, right? Because again. Okay. So, uh, I just need to announce uh, some things about the next uh, podcast, about our next guest, and about some other stuff. Uh, I hope uh, you will you will stay with me for a couple of minutes while I talk through these uh, points. As I told uh, a bit earlier, next uh, Instagram live uh, will be next Tuesday. And it will be dedicated to making a sewing frame with the simplest materials and tools. And I hope to finish it in maybe under two hours. I'm not sure. Maybe one hour. I don't know how it will go. The first stream, I thought it will be one hour long and then I was uh, streaming for two hours. You can subscribe to iBook Binding's Instagram or YouTube account to, to see these videos in the future. Um, our next guest is uh, Todd Davis from uh, from Massachusetts, from United States, uh, owner of Middlesex Bindery. And uh, this reminds me that uh, when I was discussing the stream with the, uh, you and that my first guest will be Ben Elbill, he told me, oh, I had an internet uh, uh, workshop with Ben some five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's a real sm really small world. He was, yeah, yeah, I, I think, I think he was, it was not a one-on-one, -on -one, but it was a... Yeah, it's a class, it was a class, yeah. It's a group session? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's really cool, that's yeah. really cool, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, so Todd, Todd, Todd is stranded at his home because uh, he cannot go uh, to, to his uh, uh, workshop uh, these past weeks because uh, he doesn't want to expose himself in public transport and uh, he's... Uh, he tries to work from home and to do some projects, but yeah, it's it's really hard when when all of your equipment and uh, materials are uh, at the studio. Uh, you can uh, uh, send the uh, questions if you want to ask uh, Todd some questions. You can uh, uh, write the comments below the video, or you can send them to uh, our email or uh, message us uh, anything. 
I guess uh, that's it. If you, if you have any any thoughts on who can be our next uh, next guest, uh, please uh, leave some comments. I thought about uh, doing some sort of a giveaway thing. What what do you think about it? Oh, what, sorry? Giveaway. I, I, I thought about uh, giving away some, I don't know, for example, corner cutting. Our, our corner cutting jigs that uh, is one of the most popular uh, tools we sell. Uh, for example, uh, for the person who asks the best question to our next guest, we will send a set of uh, a corner cutting jigs. We'll see how it yeah, works. That's a really good idea. That's a really good idea. Sure. So, yeah. And uh, last thing, many thanks to our patrons on, on Patreon. Uh, we are uh, giving away uh, all our books uh, uh, shared with patrons on Patreon for free this, these days during the lockdowns and, uh, and uh, the epidemic. Uh, so uh, you do not need to subscribe to, to, to be our patron on Patreon to, to read these books. And there are dozens of books there dedicated to book arts, book binding, uh, calligraphy, and all that other stuff. So. I will post the link below, check, check it and uh, read the books.